So I am I'm delighted to welcome back uh, our partners of the Global Trade Help Desk, uh, which is an initiative of the World Trade Organization, uh, the UN Conference on Trade and Development, and the International Trade Center. Uh, but I will leave it to our guests, um, Anna Jankowska of the uh, International Trade Center, uh, to elaborate on all the great things that the Global Trade Help Desk uh, tool can do for businesses and SMEs in particular. So Anna, welcome back. And I'm uh, very much looking forward to your presentation. So over to you. Thank you so much, Robin. And really, it's an honor to be here with the World Trade Center Association in this General Assembly and your amazing community representing more than 160 World Trade Centers in over 70 countries um, that have been brought together. So honestly, uh, I'm thrilled to be here. Um, as you mentioned, my goal today is to just give you a brief introduction into one of the tools that has been developed um, in the last couple of years, uh, launched last year, called the Global Trade Help Desk, because we really feel like it can simplify market research and make a life easier for the firms um, that you work with at the World Trade Center Associations, but also your clients. So um, if you will permit me, I'll just do a really brief uh, introduction. And then I will quickly do a live demo to show you how it all works. So, um, as you all know, uh, global trade is expected to have a strong recovery this year in 2021, which is great because uh, trade was down 5% last year and services were especially hard hit. So this is really good news that we need. But at the same time, we also know that the recovery is, is expected to be uneven. So these are the latest World Economic Outlook projections um, from this month. And we can see that uh, in Asia, where there was already a strong growth and strong trade um, uh, recovery in the fourth quarter, we can expect a lot more of that in 2021 with ex uh, expectations of 8.6% um, of GDP growth. We also expect strong growth in the US and a bit more moderate growth across the Eurozone, LATAM, uh, Middle East and South Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. So this means that once again, it's really important for firms to be conscious of their uh, opportunities and their prospects across regions and across the globe. So what can businesses do to really adapt their strategies and to take advantage of these emerging opportunities? And what we encourage businesses to do is to really stay informed about these opportunities and to diversify market risks. So one of the things that we learned throughout this pandemic is that if you really have your exports or your trade activities concentrated in only one or a couple of markets, this really leaves you at risk. And now as once again, um, commerce is really starting to bloom again across different regions, it's important to really take advantage of those opportunities. So how can we do this? So in December, the WTO informal working group on MISMEs, which is 91 um, governments, uh, members of the WTO, um, released six recommendations on uh, what they think can really help small and medium enterprises for, uh, in supporting an inclusive recovery. And one of these six recommendations was specifically about access to information and endorsing the Global Trade Help Desk as a key source of uh, firm intelligence or market intelligence for firms. So this is why we were working together with uh, 11 partner agencies um, a really trying to join forces to make life easier for businesses, to make sure that the information that was once scattered across 14 different databases is now accessible in one place. And we're working with um, UNCTAD, the WTO, the ICC, um, the World Bank Group, the African Development Bank, the Inter-American Development Bank, the World Customs Organization, among others. It's really a joint collaborative effort. And working together, we've produced, uh, we've put together the globaltradehelpdesk.org. And I'd really just like to take you through one example so that uh, WTCA members can really get a sense of what kind of information they can find. If you'll permit me. Um, so here we have the Global Trade Help Desk. And currently the Global Trade Help Desk is available in six languages. The Portuguese version is going to be launched actually in the next month. Right now it's still under testing, but you can go ahead and test that as well. And um, up top, there's a few links about COVID related measures, which are still uh, relevant for some sectors and in some markets. So always good to have a look there. But the main um, activity is really the search box. So we're going to give you really detailed results um, based on um, based on specifically uh, the exporting market you choose and um, 
in the product you select. So here as an example, I have chosen Vietnam as the exporter. So for a product, I have chosen tricycle. So I'm going to type in tricycle here and um, it will recommend a couple of different product codes. So I am going to choose to focus on tricycles for children. So uh, toy tricycles. And then in terms of market selection, if I don't already know which market I would like to export to, I'm going to use this help me find markets with export potential map button. And this will propose um, markets with export potential from Vietnam for tricycles. And these are the calculations uh, up to 2025. So this is the export estimated export potential in the coming five years. So we can see here that the US has the highest export potential for this product. So if we assume that perhaps the Vietnamese exporter is already exporting to the US, but would like to diversify to other markets, we can take, for example, China, and I'm going to click on go to launch the search. And what this brings up, Robin, is first it gives me an idea of how attractive the Chinese market is for uh, tricycles. So we can see what the global uh, global imports are, that it's the 18th largest importer of tricycles. And we can also get a sense of how the perspective is from Vietnam. So currently it has an import share of 6% in this market. And it's been growing quite rapidly at about 26% per year over the last five years. And we can see here that the last exports was about 52 million, where the estimated export potential is 64 million. So we can see that there's still a bit of room for growth in this market, that in, according to our estimations. We can also quickly have a look at what, uh, what the tariffs are. So we can see that there's a duty-free uh, rate. There's a 0% tariff on um, Vietnamese tricycles. But the bigger issue for firms tends to be the regulatory requirements. Like what are the actual product specifications that a firm must meet to get their tricycle to the Chinese market? So here we can see uh, both the requirements in Vietnam. So we can see that domestically um, there is a conformity assessment uh, measure and there's also some sort of fees associated with this. And we can also see across different um, product category, uh, across different categories, what the specific regulations are in the Chinese market. So for instance, if we look here at the product requirements, we can see that there's safety requirements, there's restrictions on certain su substances and um, certain import authorization, the licensing. So a firm can go um, step by step and deeply look at exactly what these uh, regulations are and make sure that they will be able to access the market um, with their product. Um, in addition, the Global Trade Help Desk also gives an overview over private sustainability standards. So this is especially relevant, for instance, for um, for produce and for agricultural goods. If you're looking to export organic or fair trade, you can find all of the information by clicking here. We also have an overview of uh, logistics performance. So the cost and time to export. This is actually a country level indicator provided by the World Bank from the Doing Business Report. And lastly, we also have um, information on how to put your plan into action to connect with some of the key partners. So you can find uh, you can connect here with intellectual property offices, the trade promotion organization, banks that provide trade finance, as well as um, businesses that are active in this uh, sector. So here we have information provided by Connect Americas from the Inter-American Development Bank, and we also have further information from TradeMap um, for uh, those that have TradeMap accounts they will be able to see, for instance, who are the importers and exporters of um, toys in China. So they will have that information here as well. Um, I also just wanted to flag a couple of last elements. So here, uh, there's also under navigate procedures, information about protecting your intellectual property. So if a firm is interested in protecting uh, their IP rights, they can also get further information and do that here. And last but not least, when we scroll down to the bottom, if we're not convinced by the results of the Chinese market, in a single click, we can update all of the same information, for instance, for Germany. And here we can see that the tariff is different and you can get further details about how to be able to access that information here. So that is the, is the quick and dirty brief overview but I just wanted to, um, to give you a, a quick view of uh, what we can see and uh, invite members to obviously take their time and, and look through it. And if you have questions in the future, 
um, I definitely invite you to reach out to me and um, contact me. Um, my uh, email address is here, ayankovskatintrasen.org. But I really hope that this tool will be helpful for WTCA members and, and for your clients as well. Um, right now, the platform is only limited to goods because the services data is not quite there yet to be able to offer um, detailed information. But um, we wishing you all the best in, in this trade recovery and in taking advantage of global opportunities. Well, well, Anna, thank you so much. And, and before we go into the Q&A, um, we're going to put up a poll as well. So please go to the poll box. Important we poll this. Uh, question one is, how helpful is the Global Trade Help Desk as a complementary tool? Second question is, will you further explore the Global Trade Help Desk as a source for information on international trade? So we'll see what uh, what the audience says here. And, and, and Anna, I mean, I every time you I, I see you at work here, I'm, I'm truly impressed. And, and um, I took note also of, of two two things. Uh, what the, the functionality of the market attractiveness, I think, is is incredible. But also the notion of of the information you provide on on protecting um, uh, international um, intellectual sorry property rights. I think that's that's an incredible uh, function there as well. So, so it, that's actually from the World Intellectual Property Right Organization. They are also a partner to the initiative. And so they provide um, their databases so you can really search uh, according to the different copyrights. Um, and then you can also um, get their services of protecting your uh, brand globally. So yeah, it, it's, in, it's incredible. The integration of, of data of, of so many organizations that, that you do. If, if your tool would not exist, I say we would have to invent it. <laughs> um, so, but, but really, I think we, we're, we're having over, well over a thousand participants in our business week, uh, in our conference this week uh, on the B2B platform. So this is definitely, um, we're going to push this out uh, to this audience. And uh, we have a bunch of questions coming in. One question is, uh, do, so do you have an idea, you mentioned the services portion of the Global Trade Help Desk, uh, Anna, do you have any idea when that may be available or become available? We're hoping in, in the coming years, we don't have a clear idea yet. The, the problem, Robin, to be perfectly honest, is the quality of the data collected by countries. Right now, for services, it's not disaggregated enough. It's not, many countries don't report bilateral statistics. So right now, we just, we have some statistics, but we don't think we can give really accurate and useful information to businesses just yet. Also, on the regulatory side, the mapping just isn't there yet either. So the, the information is super aggregated and it's uh, there's no really not the same precision as there is for goods. But this is definitely the, di um, the direction we're moving in and uh, we're, we're, we'll be working on it for sure. As soon as the data is good enough, we're there, I promise. Well, I, I appreciate the candid answer because at the end of the day, it is what is important is the reliability of the data that you provide, which is which is, you know, which is outstanding. Um, there's another quick question here. Is there a quick search function for product demand by country? Um, not in this platform. So if you're interested in product demand by country, I would encourage you, for instance, to go to um, Trade Map, where you can get an overview of the global market by product. Um, our, our goal here is to really bring together all of the information that we can at the uh, exporter, product, and importer level. So to really bring it in from everywhere, but assuming you already know, um, yeah, your product and your exporter. So um, we don't give an overview of the global market, but interesting idea. We can consider that for the future. Thank okay. you. Um, another question, how can firms be listed, uh, can they be listed as a buyer and how could organizations be listed for providing uh, their own trade services? So uh, two answers there. So one is that if you register in the Connect Americas database, uh, you can automatically be included. So please go ahead and do that. And the second answer there is that we are really looking to improve and to uh, really um, augment the uh, the coverage we have on firms there. So we are really looking for um, for partnerships in that and for if we're exploring new opportunities. So if there's uh, if there's a way to do that, we really be keen to also collaborate. I mean, I am really happy, Robin, that you guys have put together this amazing B2B event because I feel like this is really the, the best way that firms can really find the right partner. I feel like um, aside from business directories, I think that really having this interaction one-on-one -on -one is, uh, is the magical combination. So I can't wait to hear about the success stories from your B2B um, interactions this week. Yeah, thank you, thank you. We're equally excited uh, about this as well. So let's go to the poll and see um, 
what the responses are. So how helpful is a global trade has helped us as a complementary tool? Um, 80 percent is is extremely helpful and 14 percent is very helpful. So that's a 94 percent um, rate of, of the tool being a very helpful uh, tool. And uh, to the question, will you further explore the global trade held as, as a source of, for information on international trade? It's a full 100% uh, answer of yes. Uh, Great, so that's, that's exciting. Very <laughs> exciting, it's a very wonderful, so, so well done, uh, Anna. So let me, let me thank you again for, for being here with us today. And we will we'll, we'll definitely be in, in touch um, very, very soon again. So thank you so much. Thank um, you. Thank you. I would say before we close this last session of the day, uh, I'd like to mention that um, today's program will be available on demand on the Jubilia event website. And I'd also like to guide you to our survey, which should now uh, become available on your screen. So do click on the, the box for the survey. We appreciate your feedback. Um, in closing, uh, let me also briefly introduce uh, tomorrow's uh, program. So we will start at 6.30 uh, a.m. Eastern time with Peter de Keyser, uh, founder and CEO of Growth Inc. and also the former chief economist of BNB Paribas. Uh, he will provide us with an economic outlook and his view on growth opportunities in a post-COVID world. At 7 a.m. we will be joined by the visionary Sharif Al-Gamal, founder and CEO of Soho Properties, who will engage with us on the disruption and innovation of real estate. And next at 7.30 uh, will be um, the very special uh, Professor Roberto Rigolon of MIT Sloan. And you can expect an eye-opening expose on the notion of measurement and social well-being. And at 8 a.m., um, we will welcome the one and only Richard Louis, a news anchor uh, at MSNBC and NBC, who will share his story on selflessness, community, and building a stronger business. Richard is also an author and filmmaker and we will be giving away 250 copies of Richard's most recent book on selflessness. Uh, it's called Enough About Me, so stay tuned. And in closing of tomorrow, we will launch uh, WTCA's Tradewinds Global Podcast, uh, present our hosts for next year's General Assembly in Accra, Ghana, and also welcome back our chairman, John Drew, for closing remarks. So thank you very much for joining us today, and I very much look forward uh, already to tomorrow. See you then.